Hello, welcome to English for Everyone, where we practice real life American English. Today we're going to practice with a difficult structure, so let's get started. So, most of the time, when you see a verb after to, it's in a simple form, like I want to go, I need to eat. But sometimes it's not. Sometimes after to, we use a gerund. And how do you know? Well, usually, if you can put a noun after to or a pronoun after to, then if you put a verb after to, it's going to be in the gerund form. So, let's look at a few examples of this. Example, addicted to. I can say he's addicted to video games. But what if I put a verb? If I put a verb, I have to put it in the gerund form with ing. Because we see, after to, you can put a noun. Video games. He's addicted to video games. So the verb, play in a gerund form. He's addicted to playing video games. I cannot say he's addicted to play. I have to use a gerund. He's addicted to playing video games. And his parents are very upset about it. Let's practice. Are his parents upset? That's right, his parents are upset. Why? Why are his parents upset? That's right, they're upset because he's addicted to playing video games. Let's practice. Are you addicted to anything? What are you addicted to doing? Use a gerund after two. Very good. Here's another example. When I say react to, you react to something. You react to a noun. So if I put a verb there, it has to be in the gerund form. Example. He saw his ex-girlfriend with another guy. She got married. And how did he react to that? How did he react to seeing his ex-girlfriend with another guy? Well, he didn't react very well. He sent her a text message. He sent her a text message asking if they could see each other. So he did not react well. He did not react well to seeing his ex-girlfriend with another guy. Let's practice. How did he react to seeing his ex-girlfriend with another guy? Did he react well? That's right. He did not react well to seeing his ex-girlfriend with another guy. So the question, how did he react to seeing his ex-girlfriend? We see after two, we use a gerund. Let's practice the question. Ask me the question. He didn't react well to seeing his ex-girlfriend with another guy. Another example, in addition to. If I put a verb after in addition to, I have to put it in the gerund form. Example, you need to install software on your computer. And if you want the software to work properly, you have to restart the computer. So, in addition to installing the software, you need to restart the computer. Let's practice. In addition to installing the software, do you also need to restart the computer? That's right. In addition to installing the software, you also need to restart the computer if you want it to work right. So we see these three examples of when we use to plus a gerund. Addicted to, react to, and in addition to. If you put a verb after these, always put it in the gerund form. And keep watching to learn more expressions like this where we use to plus a gerund because there are a lot of them and we need to know them all. So keep watching. Most of the time, if there's a verb after to, we use it in the simple form. Example, I need to go. I want to eat. After to, we use a simple verb. Most of the time. But sometimes we don't. Sometimes after to, we use a gerund. For example, if you say from and to, we use a gerund after from and we use a gerund after to. And today I'm going to tell a story. I'm going to tell a story about a big mistake that Coca-Cola made. Back in the 80s, they changed their formula. They took away Coca-Cola and they made this new drink called New Coke. And everybody hated it. Nobody liked it. And you couldn't buy regular Coca-Cola. So they went from selling a lot to selling a little. We see after from, we use a gerund. They went from selling a lot to selling a little. With this structure, we have to use a gerund after two. And the verb is go in the past. Again, they went from selling a lot to selling a little because nobody liked the new Coke. People were angry. They were angry because they couldn't buy their Coke, their regular Coca-Cola. People were angry. They hated Coca-Cola. So another example, they went from being popular to being hated. After from, we use a gerund. They went from being popular. We see be as a gerund with ing 
being pronunciation, when you have the two E sounds, be ing, you have a E sound in the middle to link the sounds together. Being, being. They went from being popular to being hated. Now we see passive voice. Again, being hated. They went from being popular to being hated. Talking about Coca-Cola, using they as a pronoun referring to the company. They went from being popular to being hated. Let's practice. What happened when Coke released their new formula, new Coke, and they took away the old Coke? Did they go from selling a lot to selling a little? That's right. They went from selling a lot to selling a little. Let's practice. Did they go from being popular to being hated? That's right. They went from being popular to being hated. So what happened next? People were angry. They protested. They wrote letters. So what did Coca-Cola do? They released a new product called Coke Classic. It was old Coke. And people call it old Coke, but they called it Coke Classic. So then you could buy new Coke or Coke Classic. You had a choice. And everybody was happy. And then after a few years, new Coke disappeared. And they changed the bottles from Coke Classic to just Coca-Cola. And everything went back to normal. And everybody was happy. Now I can use the verb switch. Or go, you can say switch back to or go back to. In this structure, after two, we have to use a gerund again. So I can say, they switched back to their old formula and started selling more. Or I can say, go in the past, they went. They went back to selling their old formula and started making money again. Again, after two, we have to use a gerund in this structure. Let's practice. Did they switch back to selling the old formula? That's right, they switched back to selling the old formula. Let's practice with go in the past went. Did they go back to selling the old formula? That's right. They went back to selling the old formula and started making money again. Most of the time, when we use to, we use it to connect verbs. Example, I need to go. I want to eat. And after to, the verb is in a simple form when you're connecting verbs like this. But sometimes after to, we use a gerund. And in these cases, to is a preposition, and we need a gerund to be the object of the preposition. So let's practice with some important examples of when we use to plus a gerund. We're going to look at these three words, benefit, drawback, and downside. After these words, we use to plus a gerund. Example, I work from home, and there are many benefits to working from home. I cannot say there are many benefits to work from home. In this case, to is a preposition, so I have to use a gerund after to, working. There are many benefits to working from home. I don't have to drive in traffic, and I can work in my pajamas. Those are two benefits. Again, there are many benefits to working from home. Let's practice. Are there many benefits to working from home? That's right. There are many benefits to working from home. So benefits are good things. Now let's talk about bad things. When you talk about bad things or bad aspects of something, we use downsides or drawbacks. I can say the downside to working from home is that I don't get to talk to people. I'm alone most of the time. That's a downside to working from home. So after downside, we use to plus a gerund because to is a preposition and we need a gerund to be the object of the preposition. I can talk about one in general. A downside to working from home is that I don't talk to a lot of people. I'm alone most of the time. Or I can say the downside if it's a specific one. The downside to working from home is that I'm always alone. That's the one downside. But if it's one of other downsides, I can say a. Uh. A downside to working from home is that I'm alone most of the time. Or if I say drawback, it's a countable noun. A drawback to working from home is that I'm alone most of the time. I don't talk to a lot of people. That's the negative thing about it. That's a drawback or that's a downside. They mean the same thing. Something negative about it. So, he works from home. And a downside to working from home is that he's alone most of the time. And I can say a drawback 
to working from home is that he's alone most of the time. Let's practice. What's a downside to working from home? That's right. A downside to working from home is that he's alone most of the time. Let's practice with drawback. What's a drawback to working from home? That's right. A drawback to working from home is that he's alone most of the time. He doesn't talk to people like me. So remember, when you say benefit or benefits to, use a gerund. When you talk about a downside or the downside to, use a gerund after to. Also drawback. A drawback or the drawback to plus a gerund. These are all special words. And keep watching to learn and practice with more special words and expressions where we use to plus a gerund. Today we're going to talk about prepositions and gerunds. Let's get started. Which sentence is correct? There is an advantage of living in a big city. Or, there is an advantage to living in a big city. Both sentences are correct. Of and to are prepositions. You can say, there is an advantage of, or there is an advantage to. But remember, prepositions in English are followed by gerunds. We have to say, there is an advantage of living, or there is an advantage to living. Sure is an advantage to having work with someone, isn't it, Nick? Well, there's an advantage to having a losing season. Enjoy your... The advantage of being raised in the West and educated by a woman from the East. That's the advantage of being a fighter pilot. Both prepositions are correct. That's right. Two can be a preposition sometimes. But remember to use a gerund after it. So remember, prepositions in English are followed by gerunds. For example, I'm good at playing soccer. I'm interested in learning English. I'm excited about traveling. I'm tired of working so much. Let's look at some more examples of using a gerund after to. To be open to. You can say, I'm open to new ideas. You can use a noun. Or if you want to use a verb, remember to use the ing form. For example, he is open to doing more research. Let's practice. Is he open to doing more research? That's right. He's open to doing more research. Number five is that I was open to trying new things. There was a study in the 90s that was done with college students and they found that college students, when they fell in love, were much more open to trying new things in their life. Let's look at some more examples of using a gerund after to. The verb confess or the verb admit. You confess to something. If you use a verb, it's in a gerund. You confess to doing something. Or if you admit, you admit to doing something. Example, he confessed. He confessed to the crime. We use the preposition to after confess. He confessed to the crime. He said that he did it. He said that he committed the crime, so he confessed to the crime. So you can say, he confessed to stealing the money. I cannot say he confessed to steal. I have to use a gerund with ing because confess is special. We say he confessed to stealing the money. You can also change the structure. You can say he confessed that he stole the money. This is also correct. But if you say he confessed to, you have to use a gerund. He confessed to stealing the money. He confessed to committing the crime. Another example, the boy broke the window. When his mother asked him what happened, he admitted that he broke the window. So you can say he admitted to breaking the window. So if you use admit after to, use a gerund because admit is special too. He admitted to breaking the window. If you use confess, you can say he confessed to breaking the window. He said he did it. The boy broke the mirror. And when his parents asked if he broke the mirror, he said yes. He said he broke the mirror, so he admitted. He admitted it. I can say he admitted it using a pronoun, it. He admitted it. Or you can use the preposition to. He admitted to breaking the mirror. After to, use a gerund. You cannot say he admitted to break. 
It's to breaking. He admitted to breaking the mirror. He said he did it. He admitted it. Or you can say confess. He confessed to breaking the mirror. He said that he did it. The boy cheated on his test. And when his teacher asked him if he cheated or not, he said yes, he cheated on the test. So he admitted to cheating. After two, use a gerund. He admitted to cheating on the test. Or if it's more serious, you can say confess. He confessed to cheating on the test. He confessed that he did it. Let's practice. Did he confess to the crime? Yes, he confessed to the crime. Did he confess to the crime? That's right, he confessed to the crime. Did he confess to stealing the money? Yes, he confessed to stealing the money. Did he confess to stealing the money? That's right, he confessed to stealing the money. Let's practice. Did he break the window? Yes, he broke the window. Did he break the window? That's right, he broke the window. How do you know he broke the window? He admitted to breaking the window. Did he admit to breaking the window? That's right, he admitted to breaking the window. Very good. Let's practice. Did he break the mirror? Yes, he broke the mirror. Did he break the mirror too? That's right, he broke the mirror. Did he confess to breaking the mirror? Yes, he confessed to breaking the mirror. Did he confess to breaking the mirror? That's right, he confessed to breaking the mirror. Let's practice. Did he cheat on the exam? Yes, he cheated on the exam. Did he cheat on the exam? That's right, he cheated on the exam. Did he confess to cheating? Yes, he confessed to cheating. Did he confess to cheating on the exam? That's right, he confessed to cheating on the exam. Let's practice. Did he admit to cheating on the test? Yes, he admitted to cheating on the test. Did he admit to cheating on the test? That's right, he admitted to cheating on the test. Very good. Our next examples express a formal disagreement. In formal situations, if you really disagree, you can say, I object, or I am opposed. So if you say object to, use a gerund, not a simple verb. I object to doing that, or I am opposed. I am opposed to doing that. Use a gerund after to. Example, my children always ask for candy. They always want candy, but I think it's unhealthy. I object to giving a lot of sweets to children. I think it's wrong, so I use object. I object to giving children a lot of sweets. I think it's wrong. Example, there's a husband and wife, and the wife wants to go to an expensive restaurant for her birthday. But the husband says no. He objects to paying more than $100 for one meal. He thinks it's wrong. He objects to paying that much for one meal. He objects to paying more than $100 for one meal. He thinks it's wrong. Example, some Republicans are opposed to high taxes. They don't like high taxes. They think it's wrong. So they're opposed to pay. We can't say pay. We have to use a gerund. They are opposed to paying high taxes. Some Democrats are opposed to cutting taxes. They're opposed to cutting taxes for the rich. They think the rich people should pay their taxes. Or they should pay more taxes. But they shouldn't pay less taxes. So they are opposed to cutting taxes for the rich. They don't want to cut taxes for the rich. Old people, or as we call them, seniors, seniors are opposed to cutting Medicare. They like Medicare. They want to keep their Medicare. They don't want to cut their Medicare. They don't want to cut their Medicare, so they're opposed to cutting Medicare. That is, they're opposed to cutting health care for seniors. So they're opposed to cutting health care for seniors. They want to keep their health care benefits. They don't want to lose them. So they're opposed to cutting health care for seniors. Let's practice. Do you object to giving children a lot of sweets? Yes, I object to giving children a lot of sweets. Does she object to giving children a lot of sweets? 
That's right, she objects to giving children a lot of sweets. She thinks it's wrong. Let's practice. Does he object to spending more than $100 on one meal? Yes, he objects to spending more than $100 on one meal. Does he object to spending more than $100 on one meal? That's right. He objects to spending more than $100 on one meal. Very good. Let's practice. Are Republicans opposed to raising taxes? Yes, Republicans are opposed to raising taxes. Are Republicans opposed to raising taxes? That's right. Republicans are opposed to raising taxes. Let's practice. Are Democrats opposed to cutting taxes for the rich? Yes, they are opposed to cutting taxes for the rich. Are Democrats opposed to cutting taxes for the rich? That's right. They're opposed to cutting taxes for the rich. They think it's wrong. Let's practice. Are they opposed to cutting health care for seniors? Yes, they're opposed to cutting health care for seniors. Are they opposed to cutting health care for seniors? That's right. They're opposed to cutting health care for seniors. They think it's wrong. I'm determined to learn English. I am determined to learn. We use to plus a simple action. Well, what about committed? You can say, I am committed. To learn English is not correct. We cannot say, I am committed to learn English. We have to use a gerund in this case. I am committed to learning English. Example, this is the Salvation Army. The people who work at the Salvation Army are committed to their job. They help the poor. They cook for them every day. They will never stop. They are very committed to their job. What if I use an action? They are committed to help the poor? It's not correct. They are committed to helping the poor. After committed to, we have to use a gerund with ing. They are committed to helping the poor. They are committed to helping the homeless. Another example. This girl is working hard. She is committed to her schoolwork. If I use an action, a verb, she is committed to studying. She is committed to learning English. Let's practice. Let's talk about the Salvation Army. Are they committed to helping the poor? Yeah, they are committed to helping the poor. Are they committed to helping the poor? That's right. They are committed to helping the poor. Are they committed to helping the homeless? Yeah, they are committed to helping the homeless. Are they committed to helping the homeless? That's right. They are committed to helping the homeless. Very good. Let's practice. Are you committed to teaching English? Yeah, I'm committed to teaching English. Is she committed to teaching English? Very good. What about you? Are you committed to learning English? Very good. You can say committed or you can say dedicated. Dedicated implies a little more caring, but it's the same idea. So I can say they are dedicated to helping the poor or they are dedicated to helping the homeless. I'm dedicated to teaching English. Are you dedicated to learning English? Very good. Let's practice. Are they dedicated to helping the poor? Yeah, they are dedicated to helping the poor. Are they dedicated to helping the poor? That's right. They are dedicated to helping the poor. Are they dedicated to helping the homeless? Yeah, they are dedicated to helping the homeless. Are they dedicated to helping the homeless? That's right. They are dedicated to helping the homeless. Let's practice. Are you dedicated to teaching English? Yeah, I'm dedicated to teaching English. Is she dedicated to teaching English? That's right. She's dedicated to teaching English. What about you? Are you dedicated to learning English? Very good. So remember, with dedicated to, don't use a simple action. Use a gerund. I'm dedicated to teaching English. I'm dedicated to teach is not correct. Our next word is devoted. 
Devoted is similar to dedicated and committed, but we use devoted when you have love, when there is love involved. So, I am devoted, or you can use devote as a verb. I devote, in the past, I devoted. I devoted a lot of my time to teaching English. I did it because I love it, so I devoted my time to teaching English. This is Mother Teresa. She devoted her life to the church. There's no action, but what if you have a verb? She devoted her life to care is not correct. She devoted her life to caring. Again, she devoted her life to caring for the poor. This is a veterinarian, or you can say she's a vet. She worked her whole life helping animals. So I can use the description, she is devoted. She is devoted to animals. If I use a verb, she is devoted to helping animals, or she is devoted to helping stray cats and dogs. So remember, after she is devoted to, I need a gerund, helping. She is devoted to helping stray cats and dogs. I cannot say she is devoted to help. I have to use a gerund. She's devoted to helping stray cats and dogs. And she loves it. Let's practice. Did she devote her life to the church? Yes, she devoted her life to the church. Did she devote her life to the church? That's right. She devoted her life to the church. Let's practice. Did she devote her life to caring for the poor? Yes, she devoted her life to caring for the poor. Did she devote her life to caring for the poor? Very good. She devoted her life to caring for the poor. Let's practice. Is she devoted to the animals in the shelter? Yes, she's devoted to the animals in the shelter. Is she devoted to the animals in the shelter? That's right. She's devoted to the animals in the shelter. Let's practice. Is she devoted to helping stray cats and dogs? Yes, she is devoted to helping stray cats and dogs. Is she devoted to helping stray cats and dogs? That's right. She's devoted to helping stray cats and dogs. Very good. So remember these three important words. Committed, dedicated, and devoted. I am committed to teaching. I am dedicated to teaching. And I am devoted to teaching. Always use a gerund with these words. Our next expression is get around to. With get around to, we're going to use a gerund after to. Get around to means you're going to do it later. It's on your list of things to do, and you're going to do it later. It's the last thing on your list of things to do. I'm not going to clean the kitchen today. I'll get around to it tomorrow. I can use it. I'll get around to it. I'll get around to it tomorrow. But what if I use the action clean? I need to use it in a gerund form. I'll get around to cleaning the kitchen tomorrow. Sometime tomorrow. I'll get around to cleaning the kitchen sometime tomorrow. Or maybe it was on your list of things to do, but you didn't do it. We can use this expression. I didn't get around to it. Or I never got around to it. Changing get to the past, got. I never got around to it. Example, I was supposed to call the doctor yesterday, but I didn't do it. It was on my list of things to do, but I didn't do it. I never got around to it. If I use the action call, I use it in a gerund. I never got around to calling the doctor. I was busy and I forgot. I never got around to it. Again, you can use it as a substitution. I never got around to it. Let's practice. When are you going to get around to cleaning the kitchen? I'll get around to cleaning the kitchen sometime tomorrow. When is she going to get around to cleaning the kitchen? That's right. She'll get around to cleaning the kitchen sometime tomorrow. Very good. Let's practice. What happened yesterday? Did you ever get around to calling the doctor? No, I never got around to calling the doctor. Did she ever get around to calling the doctor yesterday? That's right. She never got around to calling the doctor. Very good. Another very common expression, used to. But not used to like I used to live in Mexico, but now I live in the United States. This is a different used to. 
This is be used to. I need the action be. Example, I am used to, you are used to, and he is used to. Example, he is from Mexico, but now he lives in Chicago. And the weather is very different in Chicago. It's not normal for him. It's not regular for him. He doesn't like it. He's not used to the weather in Chicago. He's not used to the cold weather. So we see with this used to, I need the action. He is. He is not used to the cold weather in Chicago. He's used to the warm weather in Mexico. So he needs to go through a process, little by little. To express this process, we say get. So he needs to get used to the cold weather. Little by little, he will get used to the cold weather. Also, pronunciation. We don't say used to, we say used to. The D is pronounced like a T, used, and to is pronounced t. So together you hear used to. You link the words used to and you hear used to. He needs to get used to the cold weather in Chicago. Also, when we use this expression, we can use it. The substitution or pronoun it can substitute anything. For example, he needs to get used to the cold weather. You can say, he needs to get used to it. Pronunciation, used to it. Now the t changes to u, used to it. Before it, we change the sound, used to it. He needs to get used to it. He's from Mexico, and now he's living in Chicago, where the weather is very cold. He doesn't like it. It's difficult, but he needs to get used to it. Example, I have a small car, and I love my small car. If you give me a big car, it will be difficult at first because it's very different because I'm not used to a big car. What if I use the action drive? Remember, this is a special expression, so we have to change it to a gerund. Driving. That's right. I'm not used to driving a big car. You cannot say, I'm not used to drive. It has to be a gerund. I'm not used to driving a big car. I'm used to driving my small car. So, if you give me a big car, I will need to go through the process, little by little. I need to get used to the big car. I need to get used to driving a big car. Let's practice. Is he used to the cold weather in Chicago? No, he is not used to the cold weather in Chicago. Does he need to get used to the cold weather in Chicago? Yes, he needs to get used to it. Is he used to the cold weather in Chicago? That's right. He's not used to the cold weather in Chicago. Does he need to get used to it? That's right. He needs to get used to it. Very good. Let's practice. Are you used to driving a small car? Yes, I'm used to driving a small car. Are you used to driving a big car? No, I'm not used to driving a big car. Is she used to driving a big car? That's right. She's not used to driving a big car. Let's practice. Now you have a big car. Do you need to get used to driving a big car? Yes, I need to get used to driving a big car. Does she need to get used to driving a big car? That's right. She needs to get used to driving a big car. Very good. You can also say accustomed to. That's right. In this case, used to is exactly the same as accustomed to. So you can say, he's not accustomed to the cold weather in Chicago. But it's not very common. People don't use it. People don't say it. So just say used to. Avoid using accustomed to because it's not very common. It's correct, but not common. So just say, he's not used to the cold weather. Another expression is adjusted to. Adjusted to is similar to used to, but it emphasizes the process, that the process is expected, and it, there will be a long process. Get adjusted to expresses that process. So the kids were studying online. All their classes were on the computer. Now they have to go back to school in person. It's going to take some time for the children to get adjusted to classes in person. They need some time to get adjusted to the in-person classes because they've been having class online for a long time. So when they go back to in-person classes, they'll have to get adjusted to attending classes in person.
it will take some time, but they will have to get adjusted to attending in-person classes. Let's practice. Will they have to get adjusted to in-person classes? Yes, they'll have to get adjusted to in-person classes. Will they have to get adjusted to in-person classes? That's right, they'll have to get adjusted to in-person classes. Let's practice. Will they have to get adjusted to attending class in person? Yes, they'll have to get adjusted to attending class in person. Will they have to get adjusted to attending class in person? That's right, they'll have to get adjusted to attending classes in person. Very good. After two, we cannot use a simple action. I cannot say, I look forward to visit my family. I have to say, I look forward to visiting my family. After two, in this case, I have to change the verb to ing. That's the gerund form. I look forward to visiting my family. Look forward to is an expression. It means you're excited about something coming in the future. You're very happy about something that's coming in the future and you can't wait. We say, I look forward to. I look forward to can be in present, I look forward to, or in continuous action, I'm looking forward to. There's not much difference. You can use both forms. I look forward to visiting my family. Or I'm looking forward to visiting my family. I can't wait. We don't always have to use a verb after this expression. We can use I'm looking forward to my vacation. Vacation is not a verb, so there's no change. I look forward to my vacation or I'm looking forward to my vacation. It's coming in the future and I'm very excited. But if I have an action, I look forward to relax, we change to relaxing. I look forward to relaxing on the beach. And my kids, they're looking forward to swimming in the ocean. Remember, not swim, but swimming. They're looking forward to swimming in the ocean. Let's practice. Are you looking forward to visiting your family next month? Yeah, I'm looking forward to visiting my family next month. Is she looking forward to visiting her family next month? That's right. She's looking forward to visiting her family next month. Very good. Let's practice. Are you going on vacation next month? Yeah, I'm going on vacation next month. And what do you look forward to? I'm looking forward to relaxing on the beach. Is she going on vacation next month? That's right. She's going on vacation next month. And what does she look forward to? That's right. She looks forward to relaxing on the beach. And what about your kids? What are they looking forward to? They are looking forward to swimming in the ocean. And what about her kids? What are they looking forward to? That's right. They're looking forward to swimming in the ocean. Very good. We saw the expression look forward to. I look forward to resting on my vacation. I look forward to relaxing on my vacation. Also, get around to. I'm not going to clean the kitchen today. I'll get around to cleaning the kitchen tomorrow. And we saw used to. We can use the action be. I am not used to the cold weather. And the action get. I need to get used to the cold weather. And remember, if you use an action, it's a gerund. I need to get used to driving a big car. And we saw adjusted to. If something is going to take time, they need to get adjusted to attending classes in person. And also we learn to avoid accustomed to. It's not very common. Use used to. What is the secret to learning a second language? After two, the secret to, I have to use a gerund. What's the secret to learning a second language? Let's practice. What is the secret to learning a second language? Very good. Also the key. We cannot say the key to learn. We have to use a gerund after the key to. The key to learning. What is the key to learning a second language? The key to learning a second language is practice. How much time you spend practicing. That's the key. That's the key to learning a second language. Time spent practicing. The more, the better. Let's practice. What's the key to learning a second language? That's right. The key to learning a second language is practice. Also with this expression, advantage. What's the advantage to coming to work early? We cannot say the advantage to come. We have to use a gerund after two. The advantage to coming. The advantage to coming to work early. 
The advantage to coming to work early is you get donuts. If you come to work late, there's no donuts. So the advantage to coming to work early is you get donuts. Let's practice. What's the advantage to coming to work early? That's right. The advantage to coming to work early is you get donuts. Also, this word. This word is pronounced prior, using the long I, pry, and er, like burger. Link the sounds together, prior. Use the y sound, like in yellow, to link the two vowels. I, er, prior, prior, prior. Prior means before, prior to. A secret to help you find these exceptions is if you can put a noun after to, then that means you have to use a gerund. So, noun after to, prior to the meeting. Okay, if I have a noun after to, I know if I need a verb, it has to be a gerund, and that means it's an exception. So, prior to the meeting, or what if I use a verb? Example, prior to buying a house, he lived in an apartment. Before he bought his house, he lived in an apartment. Let's practice. Where did he live prior to buying a house? That's right. Prior to buying a house, he lived in an apartment. Also, this expression, when it comes to. Remember, how to find these expressions, these special expressions, if you put a noun after to, you use a gerund if it's a verb. So, when it comes to computers, he's lost. I have a noun after two, so if I use a verb, I have to use a gerund. When it comes to working with computers, he's lost. I cannot say when it comes to work. I need to use a gerund. It's an exception. When it comes to working with computers, he's lost. Let's practice. Is he lost when it comes to working with computers? That's right. When it comes to working with computers, he's lost. Thank you for watching. And if you like this video, subscribe to our channel. And if you want to become a member, click the join button. We'll see you next time.